एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल टूडे आर टॉपिक इज कैरेनोइड इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द क्लोरोफिल एंड इट्स टाइप एंड टूडे वी विल बी स्टरिंग कैरेनोइड्स एसेसरी पिगमेंट्स राइट नाउ वॉट आर कैरेनोइड्स कैरेनोइड्स आर नथिंग बट द लिपिड मॉलिक्यूल्स दीज आर ऑफ टू टाइप नंबर वन इज द कैरोटीन एंड द सेकेंड वन आर जेंथोफिल फॉर एग्जाम्पल ल्यूटीन ग्लूकोजेंथिन राइट कैरोटीन आर the orange red in color carotin are orange red in color whereas the xanthophyll are in yellowish yellowish color or you can say yellowish brown in color right yellowish brown in color these carotenoids are the accessory pigments that is they are not exactly the pigments that convert light energy into chemical energy but they are helpful in doing that that is they help the chlorophyll a for conversion of light energy into chemical energy basically the normal electron flow in plants is like light energy which is absorbed by carotenoids it's then transferred to chlorophyll b molecules chlorophyll b molecules then further transfer that energy to chlorophyll a in that amount which is required by chlorophyll a that is not the excessive energy if there is excessive light energy then it is absorbed by carotenoids and chlor- chlorophyll b and is not transferred to chlorophyll a so that it is not damaged because of that excessive energy okay then from chlorophyll a reaction center and all the process of photosynthesis and energy conversion takes place then second necessary pigments we have are the phycobilins these are of two types one is phycocyanin and other are the phycoerythrin these are found in blue green algae right blue green algae phycocyanin are blue bluish purple in color phycocyanin you can say that purple in color and phycoerythrin are red in color these two are the phycobilins and are found in the blue green algae okay so now moving on to our main topic that is the photosynthesis photosynthesis has two major steps photosynthesis includes two major steps number one is the light reaction and other one is the dark reaction that we will talk about in next videos right light reaction is also called as hill's reaction because of the discoverer that is the hill was the person that discovered or that ex- who explained the light reaction that's why it is called as the hill's reaction it includes two basically st- parts or you can say it is divided as non cyclic ta- and the cyclic type right the most common one or the more important one is the non cyclic phosphorylation it includes two photosystems the non cyclic one includes two photosystem ps1 and ps2 right these terms are the terms that you need to know before understanding the light reaction there is a reaction center which includes chlorophyll a and there is an antenna complex right this now we will talk about these terms and then we'll start the light reaction so here you can see a picture of photosystem and antenna complex right what is a photosystem photosystem is nothing but a cluster of pigments photosystem is nothing but a cluster of pigments it consists of a reaction center and an antenna complex these two things are a part of photosystem the reaction center has chlorophyll a molecules which is associated with a primary electron acceptor right reaction center has chlorophyll a molecule which is associated with a primary electron acceptor and then is associated with electron transport system which we will talk about in when we start light reaction right and there is an antenna complex antenna complex is what antenna complex has many molecules of chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and also carotenoids right like for example these are the green one are the chlorophyll b molecules the yellow one and this red one are the carotenoids yellow one is the xanthophyll that is the yellowish in color and red one is the carotene carotene molecule which we have talked that 
carotin are the reddish or orangish in color whereas xanthophyll are yellowish in color and these green ones are the chlorophyll b molecules and these orange ones are also carotenes that is orange to red color is of carotene yellow is xanthophyll green are the chlorophyll b this 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 cluster of pigments is called as the antenna complex which includes accessory pigments these do absorption of light right and then transfer it to one another and then finally to the chlorophyll a molecule that is the main pigment that is responsible for conversion of light to chemical energy if there is excessive light or intensity of light is higher than these accessory molecules absorb these light waves and does not allow them to reach in excessive quantity to chlorophyll a so that it can damage the that chlorophyll a reaction center right so now you have i think understood the what, what is the photosystem a cluster of pigments including chlorophyll a b carotenoids right consisting of a reaction center and an antenna complex reaction center is the one where conversion of energy mainly occurs whereas antenna complex is the portion which absorbs the light energy and transfers it to the chlorophyll a antenna complex consists of chlorophyll a b and carotenoids whereas the reaction center includes chlorophyll a and a primary electron acceptor right now we will start what is non cyclic phosphorylation here you can see there is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 Now, what are these two terms? Firstly, we should understand that photosystem one, photosystem one, and photosystem two. These two are the photosystem that is the pigment clusters that are responsible for the process of non-cyclic phosphorylation. These are not named as the their participation in the non-cyclic phosphorylation, but they are named because of their discovery. That is, Freas one was discovered first. and ps2 was discovered later but ps2 works in the first place then the ps1 works right here you can see firstly we have photosystem 2 and then we have photosystem 1 taking its part in the non cyclic phosphorylation but they are termed as ps1 and ps2 because of their discovery ps1 is the photosystem that includes chlorophyll a or that absorbs the light with 700 nanometer wavelength that is the light wavelength having 700 nanometer will be best absorbed by chlorophyll a of photosystem 1 whereas light of 680 nanometer wavelength is best absorbed by chlorophyll a of photosystem 2 okay that's why photosystem 1 is also called as p700 that is it includes the pigment that absorb the light of 700 the best okay whereas ps2 is also called as the p680 because it absorbs the light it includes the pigment that absorbs 680 wavelength in its maximum quantity and we'll move on to the non cyclic phosphorylation what is exactly the non cyclic phosphorylation non cyclic phosphorylation is a process in which light energy falls on these photosystem and is converted into chemical energy and atp and nadp h is produced as a result of this non cyclic phosphorylation now how it occurs let's start that firstly light energy that includes the photons falls on photosystem 1 okay it is also falling on photosystem 2 remember that that will use later this point will use later that light is following on both photosystem 1 and 2 at the same time okay now firstly we will taking the photosystem 2 light is falling on photosystem 2 it includes the photon which are the energy rich packets these photons do what these photons excites the electron pair from the reaction center of photosystem 2 that is p680 right this light energy is traveling through different accessory pigments and then finally reaching p680 from where a pair of electron is excited okay this pair of electron is accepted by primary acceptor of what primary acceptor of 
reaction center that every reaction center is associated with the primary acceptor so this p680 reaction center associated with the primary acceptor this primary acceptor bob takes up this these two electrons or the pair of electron then these electrons are transferred into an electron transfer chain which you can see over here firstly it's passing to an electron acceptor the called as the plastoquinone then from plastoquinone it passes over a cytochrome complex consisting of two cytochrome the cytochrome b and cytochrome f these two are the parts of cytochrome complex from cytochrome complex the energy rich electrons are passing over to plastocyanin another electron acceptor from there it finally reaches the photosystem 1 now as the electron is passing from primary acceptor to plastocyanin up to the plastocyanin the energy of electron is released right as it is passing down energy is releasing this energy is used to produce atp by a process of kemi osmosis which we will discuss later right now from here electrons are reached over here for system 1 right by the falling of light over for system 2 electrons are excited and are accepted by primary electron acceptor from there they are transferred to plastoquinone then cytochrome complex then plastocyanin and now they are picked up by photosystem 1 right now here we have photosystem 1 as i have told you in the start of this process that light energy is also falling on photosystem 1 as light energy falling on photosystem 2 excites a pair of electrons similarly light falling on photosystem 1 also excites a pair of electron and a electron hole is generated in photosystem 1 that electron hole is then filled by the electron coming from photosystem 2 through this electron transport chain or electron transport system that is this electron pair over here this electron pair when excited from ps2 is accepted by primary acceptor and travels down an electron transport chain and is then gained by photosystem 1 because it has electron hole in it which was generated by light falling over it now this electron which is excited from photosystem 1 is accepted by the primary acceptor of p700 reaction center this primary acceptor then again transfers that electron through an electron transport chain now this electron transport chain consists electron acceptor the ferrodoxin okay photosystem 1 is associated with an enzyme nadp reductase right what is the function of nadp reductase the function of nadp reductase is to produce nadph now if you notice that there is as the light falling on ps1 generates an electron hole by the excitation of this pair of electron and this electron hole is filled by the electrons coming from this electron transport chain from ps2 similarly light is falling over photosystem 2 and also generated an electron hole over here and electron pair is excited from photosystem 2 also now what is the process that will fill this hole of electron here is the process that fills this electron pair splitting of water releases the oxygen right let me clear this up this is the process that fills the hole in photosystem 2 which was created because of light what occurs for the as photosystem 2 is associated with a water splitting enzyme that splits the water into half molecule of oxygen or you can say that nascent oxygen is produced right nascent nascent oxygen is produced or you can write it as half molecule of oxygen along with two protons and two electrons these two electrons are gained by this these two electrons are gained by photosystem 2 reaction center p680 and the electron hole is filled over here now what we have remaining a nascent oxygen and two protons over here right this nascent oxygen immediately binds to another nascent oxygen produced because of um, splitting of another molecule of water and thus an oxygen molecule is formed which is released into the air and this proton which we are left over with is transferred over here to nadp 
right these are the two protons NADP reductase uses these two protons NADP and these two electrons of photosystem 1 combine together to form NADPH plus 1 proton right that is if we want to summarize light is falling over photosystem 2 right then photos from photosystem 2 a pair of electron is excited which was accepted by primary electron acceptor and then is transferred through electron transport system is accepted by photosystem 1 because it, al it already had a electron hole which was created because of the light falling over it and that electron is accepted by the electron acceptor of PS1 reaction center that is the P700 reaction center right and that electron passes over another electron transport chain transferred to NADP because of NADP reductase and also two protons are there coming from the splitting of water which is used to fill the electron hole over here PS2 then in a way NADPH is produced right and here when electron is moving down its energy from PS2 electron transfer chain over PS1 molecule of ATP is produced to summarize we can say PS1 sorry PS2 gives off electron pair PS1 also gives off electron pair both gives off electron pair both has a uh, electron hole generated in them electron hole of PS2 is filled up by the splitting of water whereas electron hole of PS1 is filled by these electrons coming from PS2 down the electron transport chain the splitting of water gives off water splitting of water gives off three things over here in its and oxygen or you can write it as half oxygen molecule and also two electrons and two protons this nascent oxygen again binds with another nascent oxygen because of splitting of another water molecule and they are transferred to the air as an oxygen molecule this electron pair is given to the PS2 and this proton these protons are transferred towards NADP reductase to form NADPH and when the electron is passing down its electron transport chain here when the electron is passing down its electron transport chain molecule of ATP is generated because of chemiosmosis this we will discuss later in the later videos right so now we have the topic of cyclic phosphorylation which is not so common like non cyclic one but occurs when the cell is low on ATP right in detail we will talk about this in later videos so up till now about this in later videos so up till now there is non cyclic phosphorylation here you can see the abbreviations also plastoquinone plastocyanin and ferrodoxin here written over here so if you have any questions please ask it in the comment box I'll answer your questions right please subscribe to my channel share it with your friends give it a thumbs up thanks for watching bye till we meet in the next video with another lecture